Hey cats and kittens, welcome back to the show. Ed Wright said Fred Bud here. Today I'm going to be taking you through my favourite running clothing out of summer 2021. So at this midpoint of 2021, I'm going to go through some of my favourite running clothing. You guys have been asking for it, so here it comes. I will try and uh, parade the clothing for you in my own special fashion. In fact, I did used to be a cake delivery man and a catalogue model. One of those things isn't true. Lots to get through here, so let's start with the top half. Saw Running sent me over some super light items recently, and I was very glad to receive them. Amongst some of the most breathable things I've ever worn while running. In fact, I had to stop a couple of times and consider whether I was wearing anything at all. I've been utilising them on a daily basis since receiving them, and they take on the wearing, washing and drying cycle very well. The Singlet 2.0 here modelled by yours truly has been well received and I love the low weight and the slightly stretchy material present in there. I guess it's a sponge of sorts, but in the best way possible. It seems to grab the moisture from your body and send it to the outer side of the garment sort of like a wicking type ability. It's only been my go-to vest recently. If it's dry, I grab that one straight away. We've been experiencing some very warm weather here in the UK and it's really come in handy. Size-wise, I think the medium's probably perfect in length for me. I'm quite tall, I'm six foot three, but the medium's just about right. When I tend to go up in larger sizes to get more length sometimes, I lose that more tightly fitting sort of feel that you really want from a running vest. Lots of the other makes just get excessively baggy and long. So this one comes in at 62 earth credits. I have used quite a few of the cheaper Nike Myler vests, but I find after a few washes they tend to start to smell quite bad. They don't dry as well. And they're really, really warm actually in comparison to this one from Saw. Yes, they are a little more expensive, but well worth it from my experience thus far. It's pretty easy to be able to wash things these days. You only need a couple of these vests and they can take you through pretty much the whole of your running across a week. I just feel it's worth the upgrade on all fronts there. I mean, you can buy a Myler vest for like 20 quid or you can buy one of these. It's gonna probably last that bit longer and smell a damn sight better. I found those Myler vests just take a little bit longer to dry as well. If you've got very hot, you've started to sweat, it doesn't really go anywhere. They just end up getting very heavy towards the end of your run. I've also been testing out the Saw Elite Race Vest 4.0. I believe this version is a limited edition colorway. This is the one I've received though, and quite frankly, it's awesome. Very interesting material here with a mesh-like construction. It seems to grab sweat away again and sort of pull it away from your skin very quickly. Often when I've been racing in my club colours in a Ron Hill vest, I've just found that it's really warm and it gets incredibly heavy towards the end of the race. I think if I could race in anything at all in the future, it would certainly be this vest. The new cut that they've got here seems to be ideal for my physique and at only 44 grams for the medium that I'm wearing here, it really does come out as a very light race vest. I like the fact they've also removed lots of the stitching there using some other type of means to sort of compress the different parts together. There's nothing that's gonna rub on you at any point. I think when you're racing, you wanna remove any form of irritation that you can. That's why running like with a camera or something always seems a little bit alien to me. It's something else that I'm worrying about when I don't wanna do that. I just wanna focus on my performance, make sure my paces are right and really enjoying that whole process of a race. And I think that helps you to achieve this. The patterned mesh here on the Elite Race Vest really is something new. As someone who sweats a great deal, I find its wicking properties really welcoming. Again, my medium here is very figure hugging, which is exactly what you want to minimize that wind resistance. And believe you me, when you're six foot three in a very windy town, that's something that's always fresh in your mind. So I just feel a bit less of a human windsock in both of these saw vests actually. Highly recommended by me, and I think a race vest that you're gonna see at many different races in the coming months. I think they've been sending them out to lots of different running clubs, certainly in the UK. Hopefully my running club will pick up on these because they, they rock. Again, it's a tad more expensive, but I find with running equipment, you get what you pay for. One of my favorite things to purchase is new running shorts. In fact, I've started to become a bit of a collector. It's strange that I've never, collected anything in my entire life. I'm particularly partial to Nike's half-length Aero Swift running tights. In pretty much all weather conditions that I've tested these out, they're an item that I just wish I'd bought ages ago. I think I picked up my first pair a couple of months back and basically if they're dry and they're ready to wear, 
that's my choice. I got two pairs of the black version. I've just picked up this amazing, it's kind of like 3D, I suppose. It says it's crimson and coral, apparently. I got them on a sneaky birthday deal and at full price of 60 Earth Credits UK, it's a lot, but I think they're worth it. Try and use some sort of discount, guys. Bring the price down. I haven't paid more than 40 for any of my pairs. They seem to be lasting the test of time on that wash cycle and they're getting a lot of use, but they still look as good as the day I removed them from the packet. Those are a little worried. They do feature like a brief section inside, so it's fine. You will still have your modesty. They seem to have changed the naming convention of these shorts actually from the black Aeroswift versions that I've had before to I think it's Nike Dry Fit Advantage. That's like the new thing. Maybe there's a brand new thing they're going to release that they want to call Aero Swift and they've moved these down to Dry Fit Advantage. Something like that. They feel super light, supportive and barely there. But have the advantage of four pockets to which the waistband seals them up very effectively. I haven't had any problems putting keys or gels in there. I've not lost anything in any of the pockets so far. Though I do find the smaller, shallower pockets in the front are a little bit limited in terms of what you could put in there. Maybe a Werther's Original or a small emergency canister of Brute. The back pockets are fine though. You can get keys and things into there, or probably a card or something. Or maybe even some money, you know, if you still use money. That could be a thing. These offer some fantastic mobility, I have to say, where I've been working on my hip sort of flexibility and mobility. These have really come in handy. I've used the higher cut Aero Swift shorts in the past, but I find them perhaps lacking a little bit in modesty. I have to go with the large then, and they just end up being really baggy and flapping around in my legs. I kind of prefer these shorts really, or half tights as they're called. They perform superbly and they look the part as well. Surprisingly light too. They don't look like they'll be that light, but once they're on, you just don't really feel them all that much. So certainly been my go-to apparel for my daily runs and races recently. I think the only improvement that I can possibly think of would be to increase the depth of those front pockets. So I recommend you test those out, guys. I've been enjoying them very much. Do look for a deal though. I think at retail, they're a little bit pricey. See what you can find. Get your Sherlock Holmes deer stalker on. So sock wise, there's two different pairs that I want to talk about today. They stand out from the rest of the pack. I find them useful to tailor the fit of shoes that are either a little short or a little long. First up, the Nike Spark No Show Lightweight Socks. Super thin here and super light. Superb if a shoe is perhaps a little bit on the short side. I've been employing these with the Rebel 2 and also the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. I got a couple of pairs of these and they really do come in handy on those warmer summer evenings when a much thicker sock would just be like a sponge. And that's not what you want. You want something that's nice and light and airy and is just providing a bit of protection, I suppose, to the inner of the shoe, uh, stopping it from getting too sweaty. Sadly, a big price on these are about 13 Earth credits per pair, but I can confirm they wash well. Haven't had any issues with that. Dry quickly as well. If you hunt around sometimes, Nike you do discount them a little bit. They always tend to be that bit more expensive. Ones to avoid from Nike are their race socks. I've had a couple of pairs of those and they do begin to fall apart uh, within a couple of months. It's always the heel section where there's this more knitted section in the back. Those two parts tend to separate and yeah, not massively keen on those. They're great when you first utilize them, but after a little while, they do start to fall apart. So make sure you avoid those guys. I'll throw an image up on the screen of the ones to avoid. They seem to change the name of things quite often, maybe to fool us into purchasing them once again. So on the other end of the spectrum, we've got some socks from Adidas, the Adidas Alpha Skin. These work out from a perspective of more cushion if you want a little extra padding around the foot. So the low version of the sock works extremely well if you've got a shoe that perhaps runs a little long. You can bulk the foot out very slightly and just get the fit spot on. I think this is a sock you might want to reach for perhaps if you're running a half or full marathon. You want that little bit extra cushion. I found these again to be hard wearing over time. They don't bobble too much. Sizing seems to be on point as well, which is sometimes a bit of an issue with Adidas products. I can remember buying a coat from them recently in a medium and it was one of the most ginormous things that I've ever received. It was massive. I had to go down to a small, which is quite frankly ridiculous when you consider that I'm six foot three. These are a little more dense than the Nike socks, certainly. 
but they still come in at quite a low price. I managed to pick up pairs for as little as eight pounds. Another good alternative from Adidas is the TechFit ankle socks. I think if you want a little more coverage around the ball of your ankle, then this is the sock for you. Just a minimal increase in bulk on the low version, very similar in depth and fit to the Alpha Skin socks. Again, they wash well, hold up well over time. I've used these with the Adios Pro 2 recently, and the low version works really well with the Adios Pro Original. A little bit more expensive, up to £12 per pair. They don't seem to discount these as much, but always double check. You never know when Nike or Adidas are going to have a sneaky deal. So that's some of the running apparel that I've been using over the last few months. Many thanks to Saw for sending those vests over they are game changers for me don't really want to run in anything else other than that right now what kit do you find particularly effective for your training and racing let me know in the comments below a quick musical interlude for you now some rock and rollers when they re-recorded their material in the 60s or 70s it really did leave something to be desired they lost that original feel and vibe of those early recordings that made the artist so special. One such artist that this didn't happen to though is Little Richard. His best of the VJ years compilation is certainly worth picking up. You also get this incredibly terrifying picture of Little Richard on the inside cover. There's some insane versions of some famous rock and roll tracks on here. They're just mad. They have a go at anything. Some of them come off a little better than others, yes, but Little Richard does some more ballad-like tunes later on in the album too. He does a wild version of Whole Lot of Shaking going on, which is... Yeah, you wonder what they were up to in that studio. It's impossible to not like Lucille and rip it up, and then he chills everybody out with a beautiful rendition of Send Me Some Lovin'. Oh, and there's a great tune as well, which he used to incorporate into his sort of answer backs with the crowd called Ooh My Soul. I've used that one many times at rock and roll gigs. It always wins people over. Yeah, go and check it out, guys. If you can find it, you should listen to it. The Best of the VJ Years by Little Richard. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Something a little different for you. Not quite so shoe related, but important nonetheless. I think tomorrow we got the initial review of the Vomero 16 from Nike, so make sure you stop by for that one. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll those new videos out for you. And it really does help the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like, and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.